Can you all see my reindeer ears, antlers, things? Can you can you tell that it's Christmas? Is it obvious? Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys five books that you should read this holiday season. I haven't read all of them yet, but they are also on my holiday Christmas time TBR. So that is why I'm mentioning them. If I haven't read them, I will get to them and you will see reviews for them on my blog. But if you're looking for some holiday recommendations, I thought I would share these because there are a few that I was sent, there were a few that I've had for a while now, and there are a couple that I bought myself and I'm really looking forward to reading this year. So there we go. The first book that I have to share with you guys for this holiday season is The Christmas Remedy, an Amish Christmas Romance by Cindy Woodsmall and Erin Woodsmall. And this is a really cute, quick read. It's very small. I don't know if you can tell by the size compared to like my face, but it's pretty small. It's really adorable in my opinion. And I'll just go ahead and read really quickly the back cover. Out of love for her community, Holly plans to sacrifice the dreams and goals most common among Amish women her age. She has a different calling and she's determined to succeed. Joshua hadn't anticipated meeting Holly Zook again, but what if God's patchwork is more detailed than he could ever imagine? In a season of goodwill, can the two work together to deliver a Christmas miracle to Green's Pharmacy? So essentially the main character is a girl, she's Amish, everyone in her community kind of expects her to grow up and get married and have kids, but she feels called to the world of like medicine and pharmaceuticals and wants to bring modern medicine to her Amish community and she's not sure she can do that and still have a relationship with like this other guy that she kind of likes. So that's the basic premise of this book. It's really cute for like Christmas time. I enjoyed all the references to like snow and holiday cheer. I actually did review this one on my blog, so there should be a review up there if you scroll back a little bit and would recommend. That's actually the only one in this pile that I've read. So yeah, that's probably why I mentioned it first. The next one is The Christmas Heirloom, which is four holiday novellas of love through the generations. It's a compilation by these lovely authors. You can't really tell, hold on. It's a compilation by these lovely authors. It's a bunch of different stories about this Christmas heirloom. <laughs> I'll just read the back cover. Perfect for the Christmas season, four beloved authors bring their best-selling award-winning talents to a multi-generational collection of romantic holiday novellas. In stories ranging from 1820s Regency England to present-day Washington State, readers will be treated to Christmas tales of an heirloom brooch passed from mother to daughter for almost 200 years. Will the family legend claiming the brooch brings love to its recipient hold true for these women separated by the years but bonded together by the ties of family? I think this one sounds really cute. It's historical and I love historical so I can't wait to read this one also. The next book that I'm sharing is Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock. I haven't read this one either but I've heard amazing things about the author and by the way for this one I'm a huge fan of Karen Wittemeyer so I can typically recommend her books and this one I'll just read the back cover again as a first-year law associate Sydney Batson knows she will be updating her resume by New Year's if she loses her current case so when her grandmother gets inexplicably ill while she's in court Sydney arranges for a cab to get her to the clinic the last thing cab driver Finn Parrish wants is to be saddled with a wheelchair-bound old lady with dementia. But because Miss Callie reminds him of his own mother, whom he failed miserably in her last days, he can't say no when she keeps calling him for rides. Once a successful gourmet chef, Finn's biggest concern now is paying his rent, but half the time Callie doesn't remember to pay him at all. And as she starts to feel better, she leads him on wild goose chases to find a Christmas date for her granddaughter. When Finn meets Sydney, he's quite sure she's never needed help finding a date. Does Miss Callie have an ulterior motive, or is this just a mission driven by delusions? He's willing to do whatever he can to help fulfill Callie's Christmas wish. He just never expected to be a vital part of it. I'm really looking forward to reading this book. It's a contemporary, and if you like contemporary, this is a contemporary Christmas book for you. I kind of have been, as you know, trying to expand my horizons more and read more contemporary, but... We'll see how that goes. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. The cover is adorable, all the Christmas vibes. Do check it out if you like. Let me know how you like it so I can, you know, read it also. <laughs> you can do my job and recommend books for me. This cover, oh my goodness, do you see just all the Christmassy vibes? Ah. 
This book is called The White Christmas Inn by Colleen Wright, and I'm just a little bit, like, obsessed with the cover and the premise, to be honest. A New England Inn seems like the per- <laughs> Sorry, every time I hear New England Inn and White Christmas, I just think of snow. 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 And White Christmas and, you know, it must be beautiful this time of year. All that snow in Vermont. I don't know. My inner White Christmas is geeking out, but... I guess if you don't watch White Christmas, you're not gonna get any of these jokes, so. We'll follow the old man wherever he wants to go, wherever he wants to go, wherever he wants to go. We'll follow the old man wherever he wants to go. Oh, I love it so much. Ah! Okay, anyways. A New England Inn seems like the picture-perfect place to spend the holidays, but when a snowstorm shuts the roads and keeps the guests inside, they find themselves worrying that this Christmas may not be exactly what they dreamed. Molly just needs to keep her head down and finish her latest book, but her writer's block is crippling. The arrival of Marcus, a handsome widower with two young girls, is exactly the distraction she doesn't need. <laughs> Hannah had planned a picturesque winter wedding, but as the storm hits, her plans come crashing down. Just when she thinks she'll never love again, her childhood friend Luke comes to check on his grandmother before the storm. Could there be romance in her future after all? Jean and Tim don't know how they're going to keep the inn open another year or how to bridge the distance between them in their marriage. With a flurry of unexpected guests, they'll have to work together to keep their little inn afloat. But will it be enough to rekindle their relationship? As the characters' stories intertwine, they start to find hope where they thought it had been lost. Though this, def though this is definitely not the Christmas any of them imagined, with faith and a little bit of holiday magic, they all just might... Find this the most wonderful Christmas ever. And oh, if that doesn't like grab your attention like it grabbed mine when I saw it in Barnes and Noble, you need to like go have your brain scanned. I think that sounds adorable. I just like that their stories intertwine and that it's about a bunch of different couples and it sounds really cute and all the white Christmassy feels and the cover and the Christmassy love and drama and happiness. So I can't wait to read this one. It's also contemporary, so if you like contemporary, this one might also be for you. Be sure to go and check it out and on to the next book. This next book I have is by Diana Wallace Taylor and it's for you biblical fiction fans. I haven't read it myself, but I'm kind of dying to get my hands on it because this is Mary Chosen of God. So basically it's a biblical fiction novel about the life of Mary mother of Jesus. There's not really much more I can say. I've read a lot of Diana Wallace Taylor's other books and I've always enjoyed them. So I'm looking forward to reading this one, but I haven't yet. So, you know, take all these with a grain of salt because I haven't read them, but I'm going to. So you could also consider this, this a TBR. I don't know. Is this my first TBR? I like never make TBR videos because I'm, I can't commit. But anyways, yeah. So if you like biblical fiction, you might consider checking this one out. It's biblical fiction and it's a Christmassy kind of story. Also an Eastery kind of story, but every day is Christmas. <laughs> so these are five Christmassy reads to add to your TBR that are also being added to my TBR. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and like it if you wanna see more content like this, as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, go and check out all my social media links in the description below. I'm Jenna Van Maurick. You can find me on Instagram at Jenna Van Maurick, on Twitter at Jenna Van Maurick, and on my blog, jennavanmaurick.com. So make sure you do that so you never miss a new review, you never miss a new bit of my life, and you never miss a new video. Am I right? I will see you all in my next video. Thanks so much for watching again, and bye!